Hello, in this video we look at projection matrices and I try to make it an introductory topic and we'll just jump right in. So the inner product or dot product of n by 1 vectors so let's say we x and y is this x dot y it's actually the same as the vector product of x and y which is this sum. You, so you, really you just take the first components add it to the multiplication of the second components and so on and it can generically be written like this um, also uh, the length of a vector we will denote it by these double bars which is the square root of the dot product or the vector make you know the dot product with itself or this vector product which is this and now let's show that the dot product can be thought of as this the length of x the length of y times a cosine of theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors x and y and we're only going to look at the angles that are bet, uh, between 0 and pi and now let's prove it so if th this is the case that we have so we have a, a generic x vector a generic y vector and the angle between them okay now this length of x is is x you know the this and the length of y is this number the vector going from x to y is y minus x and its length of course is described like that and one way to think about this is is x or y minus x how do we know that well and if we do vector addition, if we take this vector x and add it to y minus x, you know, so x plus this, we get y, which is this. That's kind of one way to remember it. Now, the law of cosines says that, that we have this relationship. And so, you know, in it, we take the cosine of theta. And that is, you know, one, actually, it could be any one of these angles, but the equal to is the one is the side opposite of it so it's the length of this vector squared plus the squared length of y plus the squared length of y minus two times this length here now if 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 this were perpendicular this angle would be 90 which means the cosine is zero so this part goes away and we're actually back in the Pythagorean theorem setting okay so now here the squared length of this is you take the first component squared so y1 minus x1 squared all the way to the nth component yn minus xn squared and then we do the same thing here so this is y1 squared plus y2 squared up to yn squared this one is x1 squared all the way to xn squared and then we just keep this one the same right here it's kind of small because I ran out of paper but this is the same as that now notice that when we multiply each one of those so let's multiply this we get y1 squared plus y2 squared minus 2xy well the y squared y1 squared cancels here and the plus x1 squared cancels here so actually all of these cancel with all of these and we're only left with the minus two times you know each of those components well now let's divide through by minus two everywhere and then we're left with the dot product is equal to this and that's what we're trying to prove right so we're finished now this uh, inner product and realistically it should probably be called the standard inner product but we're just going to call it the inner product here the inner product can be used to check for orthogonality so if the angle between any two vectors is 90 which means perpendicular or orthogonal then this covariance is zero which means yeah, it's zero, which means the dot product is zero, or the inner product. So we can take, so what that means is if, if, the, if the angle is 90, that means the dot product is zero. And that's actually a check that we can do for orthogonality. If two vectors 
are perpendicular to each other, their dot product is zero. Now, initially, I jumped straight into the general approach. And then afterwards, I thought, nah, I better do an example first before I jump into that general case. So let's look at R2 space. We have a vector W and a vector V. Okay. And I just labeled them one, this little short vector two, this distance three, that vector is four, this vector is five, and this vector is six. And we're going to go through each of those. So one, it's the original vector W. Now, if we divide by its length, then we make this overall vector of length one. And that's what this two represents, this little short vector. It's a vector in the direction of W, but it has a length of one. All right, so if we multiply this little short vector by the length of the original W, then it stretches it back out to here. And you can kind of see that, then they would cancel. So three, this distance, right? So um, we need to figure out what that is. But this distance here, V, the distance is the, you know, the, the length of V. So it's that double bar V. And this is cosine. So if we take the cosine of theta, it's this length, divided by this length and you can kind of back solve and it's and it's this so the length of, of whatever this vector is you know where it makes a 90 degree angle is this so now we multiply this times 1 which is the length of W divided by the length of W right but then this top part can be thought of as the dot product between W and V right and then here, this will make more, even more sense on page three. W divided by its length, this is actually a unit vector in the direction of W, right? So then this is the vector product. So we can actually think of it as a unit vector in the direction of W dotted with V, or this unit vector in the direction of W matrix multiplied by V, okay? And That'll make more sense on page three. Um, so the perpendicular projection of V onto W is this, okay? So we know that this is the unit vector in the direction of V, and we know its length now, which is this. This is a number, so we take this number times this unit vector and it stretches it out to here. So that's what we do. So this unit vector is right here and this is a number. This is, and so we get this. Then since it's, you know, you can multiply it together and then we, re, we kind of rethink about it, W, W prime divided by the squared length of W times V, right? So now, um, and actually, you can kind of think about this as a unit vector in the direction of W, a unit vector in the direction of W, you know, multiplied like this times V. Now, notice that V is actually can be any arbitrary vector, right? And this matrix will always map V onto W, right? So this matrix is called a perpendicular projection matrix onto W. Because right? it, it always maps it down. Wherever we start with V, this maps it down. Now, five is the original vector. And this one, it, this vector is whatever this vector is, you know, it's V minus whatever this vector is, okay? So let's, let's look at that, the vector orthogonal to W, which is this one. So it's V minus whatever that vector is, okay? So V minus, and then we said this vector was that, right? Now let's write, factor out a V, and we get this. So this is a matrix times V. But note that this, and V is kind of arbitrary, right? So this matrix 
is called the perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of W, right? This matrix, wherever V is, you know, if it's up here, left multiply it by this, and, it, and you get that vector orthogonal to W. Okay? So that's an R2 space. Now let's go to our N space and think about it. So we have a matrix with R, we're in our N space, so we have a matrix with R vectors. Oh, what dimension are these vectors? Well, they're N by 1, right? We're in N space. The right, we're going to think about it as the rank of R, so they're R in, independent vectors. Let's let OX be an orthonormal basis for the be an orthonormal base for the column space of X. So whatever this spans to, you, we only need these R orthonormal vectors in place of these. Now we're going to pick R minus N additional vectors such that we can we can add more to these and then we get an orthonormal basis for the the whole Rn space okay so now let's let V be in Rn not in the column space of X okay then V is a linear combination of these orthonormal vectors right for some A where A1 through An are real numbers and O 1 through ON are vectors, okay? Now I'm going to scroll down, but for, don't look at this just yet, okay? So over here, generically, we let the column space be represented by this. You know, kind of span, it's a subspace of RN. And now it does go through the origin because any, any space has to. Then we pick a vector not in this column space, and our thought process is we want to project it down into this column space of X such that it's orthogonal. Um, so now that's sort of the goal. Now here, V was this linear combination of the orthonormal vectors, orthonormal bases, can be thought of as like this, just the sum of these. But we could stop this sum at the first R and then go to the R plus one to N, right? So this, this, and this are all the same. And then we and then I like to think about it as a matrix. So this is OX times some vector AX. So when you matrix multiply this out, you get this. And this is the same way. OV. And that stands for all the other orthonormal vectors that make up V. This is AV. So really th these are all the same. But the properties of orthonormal vectors is the, the dot product of any two <coughs> or the matrix multiplication of any two vectors is zero. They're orthogonal to each other. The inner, inner product is zero. And when you dot them with themselves, it has a length of one. Okay, But note here that this first piece right here is actually in the column space of X. So OX, AX, the vector, or, or this, linear combination of the orthonormal vectors that's, that make up the, column, the span of X, or column space of X, is so the, this first piece of our vector V lives somewhere in this column space. Now we don't know more than that, right? And then this vector is some other vector, right? So really this W could go off this way, that's this, it could be this, and then that piece is the vector that brings it back to V. Or it could be a little bit longer, that's this, because it lives in the column space, right? It's a linear combination of the orthonormal basis for the column space of X. And then this vector brings it back to V, because, right? They have to add these two vectors to get back to V. But it turns out that this second piece is in the orthogonal complement of the column space of X, okay? And this is how you see that, that you take this vector, right? These are all vectors times a, a real number. So you get a vector back. This is a vector, and this is a vector. So let's look at the vector product of these, all right? Now, I like to think of them in matrix form. So I'll put that here, 
and and this piece here and we get this right we distribute the the transpose and we get this now notice that now it becomes this it used to be the column vector now it's a row vector but it's a column this column times this column this column times this and they're all different right and we said that when the columns are multiplied we get zero so this of course because you can kind of see it better written like this then when you do this matrix multiplication you get a zero matrix so you get zero so that says that these two vectors are orthogonal to each other so this lives in the column space of X and this is perpendicular orthogonal so it pretty much has to be this vector and this vector has to be this one right because they have to add to this and, th and they're perpendicular to each other <clears throat> right so W is this first vector and V minus W is that second vector because they're orthogonal they have to be so now <clears throat> note that O X O X transpose times V can be thought of as this so the OX just and the V is act remember it was the addition of these two vectors but then when you multiply OX transpose with OX you get the identity matrix so then you just get this back and then OX transpose times OV all those orthogonal vectors are different so you get the zero matrix so this piece is zero so this product you get this which is W now and this is for any V. So you take OX, OX transpose times any V, and you get something that lives in the column space of X. And this OX, OX transpose is actually a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X. And this is for any V in R. Okay, so now one more and then we're finished. So I minus OX, OX transpose times V. Now, if we take this in to both of those we get this but this right here um, oop, right here we said was W so it's V minus W and that that's what we said was the orthogonal or it was in the orthogonal complement of the column space of X this is for any V so this matrix I minus OX OX transpose is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. Okay. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully, that was a, a good introduction to projection matrices. And we'll do more. I have, I'm going to end up having uh, three or four videos on projection matrices. Well, that's all I have. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.